from Podcast One. Coming up in this episode of Target USA. Our relationship with the United States uh, is a very consequential relationship. Assad Majid Khan is Pakistan's ambassador to the U.S., and his mission in Washington is to improve relations. People back home also have uh, a, a slew of uh, complaints uh, and, uh, you know, apprehensions and concerns uh, of, about the about, uh, uh, United States uh, having left us, uh, uh, you know, when uh, we had done so much for the United States. When was that? You go back, you know, I mean, look at uh, uh, what we did together uh, in Afghanistan. And speaking of Afghanistan, there are those who say terrorism that originates in Pakistan is a part of the reason the U.S. is having so much trouble with the Taliban. But Majid says that's not the case. Uh, the Pakistan-Afghan border, these tribal areas, you know, they have been cleansed. There is absolutely no organized presence. And did you know that Pakistan represents Iran's interest in Washington? All that coming up on this edition of Target USA. The National Security Podcast. From WTOP in Washington, D.C., this is Pakistan. And Pakistanis will ask, can the U.S. be trusted? On this program, we talk with Assad Majid Khan, the ambassador from Pakistan to the U.S., and he starts us off with a conversation about their new prime minister, Imran Khan, and President Trump. Well, Prime Minister Imran Khan is uh, the head of uh, Pakistan Tehreek-e Insaf, which is Pakistan Justice uh, Movement Party, uh, a party that uh, he launched uh, about 20, 21 years ago. And uh, uh, he is uh, himself uh, a, a list, a celebrity in the sense a celebrated sportsman uh, and a philanthropist uh, who has now dedicated his life and career uh, to bringing about change uh, in Pakistan, uh, to basically work towards building a new Pakistan, which uh, uh, basically provides the enabling environment uh, for people to to have better, more jobs, to have better health, to have better education. So it's really a people-centric, peace-oriented uh, agenda that uh, he has, and I think what is new about him and his party is that after a long time uh, we uh, have had uh, uh, two political parties alternate so he's he's kind of an outsider uh, in in terms of uh, uh, his party uh, because it is a party which is a new party also and uh, uh, his commitment uh, is also more uh, people oriented and development focused the United States has a fairly new president as well. How does Mr. Khan and Mr. Trump get on? What's their interaction like? I Well, uh, at least uh, they haven't had any interaction uh, so far, so it is uh, hard for me uh, to speculate uh, on how well they would actually go along. But uh, I can tell you that... Uh, our Prime Minister is uh, uh, as much uh, uh, a, a personality who, uh, is, uh, uh, who is a celebrity in his own right, uh, who uh, has uh, so far shown uh, a, a tendency to do things uh, in a non-conventional way. Uh, and, uh, so, uh, and then he's also someone who is, uh, uh, has actually over the years uh, been a very strong proponent of peace uh, in Afghanistan. And I think that's something that uh, he shares uh, with uh, President Trump. And in my view, that uh, would provide uh, a good basis for the two leaders to have uh, a good uh, productive conversation. President Trump, Based on what we've seen from him in the press, has not seemed to be very interested in improving our relations with Pakistan. Do you get that sense? At, at least not uh, uh, on the basis of uh, what I have heard uh, uh, from uh, the president, uh, at least in some of his more recent comments. 
uh, in terms of uh, uh, saying publicly <coughs> on record that uh, the relationship uh, is in good place and that uh, he uh, is uh, looking forward to uh, meet our prime minister. So uh, that way, uh, obviously, you know, uh, interstate relationships and uh, uh, the way uh, President Trump uh, goes on uh, uh, in, in dealing with uh, U.S. Uh, relationship with other countries, uh, he has a way of doing it. So uh, he has said these things about other countries also. So for us, I think this is an important relationship. Uh, for us, this is uh, our relationship with the United States uh, is a very consequential relationship. And we want uh, to have a a long-term and broad-based relationship and and we see and we hear uh, from uh, our other interlocutors and including from the prime minister uh, president more recently that there is a desire uh, for a good relationship and uh, there is a recognition of the importance and relevance of this relationship have you had any conversations with president trump I, I had when I presented my credentials. Uh, other than that, I have not had. I had a brief conversation with Vice President, uh, and uh, I had, uh, uh, but with the President, I haven't had as yet. How do you find the Vice President? I found the President also very gracious uh, and very warm. Uh, it was a brief exchange, as you do actually for the credentials, but. Uh, uh, he was very warm and gracious, and uh, my conversation with Vice President. In fact, I was, uh, I uh, was in uh, uh, in Indianapolis uh, yesterday uh, for Senator Luger's funeral, uh, and before that, I was at uh, the White House of Tar, where I had a brief conversation with uh, the Vice President, and uh, that was uh, a very uh, pleasant uh, conversation. Okay, the niceties aside, all of those have been taken care of. You've met, you've been very, you know, received very politely, and, 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 and that's not anything less than what we'd expect from the president and the vice president. They both are very polite people. But when it comes to diplomacy, when it comes to policy, the White House has said some things regarding aid to Pakistan. It said some things uh, regarding Pakistan's nuclear weapons, uh, its relationship with Iran, its relationship with Russia. Those issues are not easy issues, it appears. I'm wondering, where is the relationship going in terms of dealing with, first of all, Russia and supposedly missiles or weapons that Russia is selling to Pakistan? and um, the problem that it might create with India. No, really, I think, I mean, it's uh, a very uh, comprehensive uh, relationship. As I said, that for us it is a consequential and comprehensive relationship. So, but uh, frankly, over the last, I would say, almost 20 years, uh, this has been essentially seen uh, through the Afghan lens. Uh, so ups and downs in the situation in Afghanistan has kind of influenced uh, the perceptions uh, and direction of this relationship. So uh, the, the, the centerpiece of the conversations uh, that uh, uh, we are having with the United States essentially revolves around Afghanistan. And on that score, I can tell you that uh, there are good developments uh, uh, on uh, the, the political settlement front and the fact that the United States uh, is, is directly engaged uh, uh, with Taliban uh, basically uh, provides uh, that basis that would enable us to have more trust to kind of go into other areas. Well, that is the key, Ambassador, the trust, because the U.S. has accused Pakistan on more than one occasion of trying to disrupt um, the progress that the U.S. is trying to make in Afghanistan on a terrorist, from a terrorist perspective. And uh, how do you receive that? I think uh, it's, again, I, it, uh, what uh, we would want United States is uh, to judge us on the basis of... Uh, uh, today and not uh, on the basis of uh, yesterday or day before yesterday and what we are doing uh, and uh, in terms of uh, supporting the peace process, uh, in terms of uh, uh, dismantling uh, the successes that we have achieved, uh, in, in dismantling uh, the, the networks uh, or uh, non-state actors who were uh, using our territory. And I think we have a lot 
to show uh, for in terms of uh, uh, the successes that we have achieved. So really, I think uh, I, because past is past and we also have, and, and people back home also have uh, a, a slew of uh, complaints uh, and, uh, you know, apprehensions and concerns uh, of about about uh, uh, United States uh, having left us, uh, uh, you know, when uh, we had done so much for the United States. When was that? Oh, well, I think... Oh, I guess uh, which time? Uh, well, you go back, you know, I mean, look at uh, uh, what we did together uh, in Afghanistan. Uh, I think uh, you uh, basically... Uh, I mean, the United States was able to claim success uh, in Afghanistan without uh, having to fire a single bullet mm. and without having to uh, spill a single drop of blood. Uh, and that uh, all happened with the support of Pakistan, dismantling al-Qaeda, all the leadership, you know. Uh, are you so, talking about in the 90s or later? I'm talking about the 90s. I'm talking about uh, the, the, the new century also in terms of the, the fight against terrorism and the successes that you achieved in dismantling the al-Qaeda network across the board. And Ambassador, you are absolutely correct. The U.S. has abandoned Pakistan on more than one occasion. It's been very pragmatic in its dealings in, 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 in Afghanistan, in, in India, and in Pakistan, and it's kind of hopped around uh, in terms of uh, who it's friends with and who it's, it's working with and what's most important. Um, is it possible to move on from that disappointment? Because there's nothing to say that won't happen again between the U.S. and Pakistan. So is it possible to trust the U.S.? I, you know, I think it's, we, we should not conceive our state-to-state uh, -state relationships more like our personal relationships. I think it is, all states are driven by their interests and uh, uh, is, so is the United States and so should Pakistan be, you know. Uh, and and uh, I, I take a very practical and pragmatic view of that. And I think it serves the interests of both countries and both people to have actually a, a strong relationship, a strong partnership. And, and that's the point that uh, I'd like to make here because I think uh, uh, Pakistan is an important and very significant country in its own right. So we don't really want either to be seen through the Afghan prism or through the Chinese prism or through the Indian prism, you know. We are the fifth or the sixth largest English uh, country in the world in terms of population. We are perhaps the third or the fourth English-speaking country in the world, you know. We are a very strategically located country. Our two countries have actually partnered on some of the most transformational projects of the 20th and 21st centuries and have produced very good results in the past. I don't see no reason why we should not be uh, able to do that. And I think what a good way of going about that is to not just leave this relationship as security-centered, where, uh, you know, you only have uh, counterterrorism uh, and some of those concerns and considerations, because that is what perhaps makes it even more transactional than what it should be. So I think there are tremendous opportunities in Pakistan to uh, forge a, a more uh, balanced and a more comprehensive partnership where we have trade, we have investment, because, you know, Pakistan, are, we are 210 million people, uh, uh, and a, a, a middle class which is fast growing and a, their purchasing power also on the rise. So there is a domestic captive market for your companies, for and there are U.S. companies have historically done very well there. Mm. So the energy sector, the IT sector, the, the agro-business sector, uh, and the connectivity and regional integration potential that we offer. So these aspects, I think, make me absolutely convinced that there is a good and very strong case 
for our two countries to have a partnership which creates those win-wins. We don't want to have one-way streams, you know, or be it on the trade side, be it on the business side. You go and you ask Procter & Gamble, their rate of return in Pakistan is one of the highest for any of their operations anywhere in the world. And they have, despite all the security challenges that we faced over the last 20 years, have continued there. PepsiCo has just actually made a new investment in Pakistan. They have expanded their operations. Uh, Exxon Mobil is there. They are, I think, just about 150 meters away, as I was reading this morning, from perhaps uh, finding uh, some oil in Pakistan. Mm -hmm. So uh, there are others that are involved in LNG and other energy businesses. I hope is in Pakistan. Iran, what's your view on um the situation with Iran, I know you've long been an ally of Iran, uh, and the U.S. is in a very difficult situation right now with Iran. What's your view on that? I mean, of course, we are concerned. Uh, we are very concerned because any escalation uh, in our uh, uh, close neighborhood, uh, uh, we have a volatile neighborhood in any case. You know, we have uh, Afghanistan on our western border. Uh, then we have an escalation on our eastern border with India. So uh, to have uh, uh, another escalation uh, around Pakistan uh, on the southwestern uh, border is something that uh, uh, we do not look very kindly at. Mm. And it's certainly a source of concern. And we would like uh, uh, both countries to be able to uh, resolve uh, whatever differences and issues they have through dialogue. Considering the role that uh, Pakistan could possibly play in diffusing, the, diffusing that tension, uh, has that been suggested? Is that being acted on? Uh, I cannot comment on that, but uh, I can tell you that... Uh, Is that classified? Uh, no, I won't know. It's, uh, it's hard for me to say whether it is, uh, it exists or not, or whether it, the classification would then entail that perhaps there is something. Mm. I can't comment on that. But I can tell you that uh, uh, for us, uh, this is, as I just said, uh, a source of uh, serious concern. Uh, and uh, Pakistan, I don't know if you are aware, uh, I am also, uh, we are the in charge of the Iranian interest section uh, in Washington, D.C., mm -hmm. and this has been so for uh, as long as 40 years or more, more yes. than 40 years. So uh, we would like uh, both countries because uh, we have uh, an old and uh, strong relationship with Iran and we have an equally uh, good relationship uh, with the United States also. And I hope that uh, things do not uh, uh, get out of hand and both countries will be able to come to some kind of, uh, you know, resolution. What is it that you would like most to engage with the U.S. on? Aside, you've mentioned trade already. You've mentioned the economics. Um, clearly, it, you know, Af Afghanistan is, is very clearly uh, something that needs to be dealt with and, and, and effectively. What is it that is most important for Pakistan when it comes to this administration? What's most urgent to deal with? I think uh, it's uh, uh, finding peace in Afghanistan. I think this is a unique opportunity. Uh, and uh, this is an opportunity because you have a president uh, who is uh, very keen and committed uh, to achieve some kind of a political settlement. And we have always believed that there is no military solution to the conflict in Afghanistan. So, and our prime minister and our leadership is also extremely committed to, and we have actually made a very serious and sincere effort in facilitating the peace process. So, if you were to ask me in terms of not what we would like to, but what is it that we can do to produce optimal results, uh, at present, I think it is Afghanistan. Mm. Uh, and uh, that's where we would like, you know, even other countries also in the region uh, to basically contribute. Because 
uh, if situation goes out of hand, you know, I mean, as, as you just mentioned, the escalation with Iran, you know, that will have implications for the wider region and whatever peace efforts are uh, underway uh, elsewhere as well. So I think it's very important that we need to basically get as many areas of conflict out of uh, the conversation by achieving uh, some kind of resolution or some kind of peace. So Afghanistan is one. And uh, of course, as I said, that uh, business uh, and investment. But education is another area where I would personally uh, like uh, to see a lot more cooperation. Because as I said, you know, I mean, Pakistan, uh, you know, our educational institutions, uh, English is the medium of instruction. So for most of our students, you know, United States is uh, the destination of choice. Uh, and uh, uh, we would like to bring in more and more students to United States to, to, to take away uh, the best that you have uh, to offer, actually, in terms of education, uh, both in science, STEM, uh, science and technological, uh, research also as well as on the social uh, studies. Uh. One of the real concerns, and I think, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, um, three uh, of your diplomats, there were some issues with their visas not long ago. Tell me if I've got that wrong. I hope I don't have that one wrong, too. Um, and, um, you know, this administration has taken a very hard line on immigration and, um, you know, have blocked people from certain countries from coming here. Um, is that something that you're worried about? Is that something you uh, have to have a discussion about, is how this administration views uh, uh, more, more, more Pakistani nationals coming here to study, to live, to matriculate, to learn, uh, and some to stay? No, I think, well, if you are, uh, you know, alluding to some of the uh, reports that were carried by our media, in particular in Pakistan, and then picked up uh, some of yours also on there being visa sanctions on Pakistan, uh, I think those uh, were uh, uh, completely unfounded uh, uh, in the sense that the normal uh, visa operations uh, uh, continue. Uh, between uh, United States uh, and Pakistan and our ordinary citizens can certainly apply and get visa. So the consular operations, uh, U.S. consular operations in Pakistan uh, remain unaffected. Now, uh, there has been uh, these uh, uh, conversations on the issue of repatriation of those individuals who have uh, deported. Yes, uh, overstayed. Uh, they are welcome in the United States. Uh, so the issue of deportation, and in in and that's an ongoing conversation because you know in some cases they have documentation, in some cases they don't have documentation, or the documentation is inadequate, and uh, therefore uh, in in certain cases it becomes very difficult uh, for uh, say for instance Pakistan to uh, you know confirm the national status of the potential deportee based on the documentation that the United States has provided. So that conversation is an ongoing conversation. And in that context, uh, it was only a couple of individuals, uh, not more than two or three, who were basically, uh, I should say, uh, could be considered for non-issuance of visas. I would not characterize that as sanctions. Uh, but even on that score also, I think there has been very positive conversations. We have covered a lot of ground. So I really don't see that as becoming an issue. But so far as visa operations are concerned, the U.S., there are no sanctions at all. The relationship with India, how, is, how are things now? There, there, there have been flashpoints, and there was uh, another flashpoint not too long ago. How is the relationship now? Well, I would say it's it's uh, it's a difficult relationship. It's still in a very difficult place, uh, and uh, unfortunately, uh, on 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 the line of control, uh, in particular, you know, uh, well, things have calmed down, uh, generally speaking, but uh, uh, there are still uh, violations taking place. Uh, only in the past few weeks, uh, there are. Uh, 
several of our civilians who've been killed because of uh, the uh, fire from across uh, the Indian side. Uh, so that capability uh, is there and uh, also uh, the, the, the repression that uh, the Indian uh, forces have unleashed uh, in the occupied Kashmir uh, in terms of arresting uh, the Hurriyat leadership and those who are, you know, struggling uh, for their rights. Uh, uh, that is basically continuing. And uh, uh, But so far as Pakistan is concerned, I think we have uh, consistently uh, uh, maintained and Prime Minister, this Prime Minister in particular, uh, has uh, sought peace uh, and uh, you know if you look at uh, how this whole Pulwama episode played out frankly uh, it is uh, I mean India first said that uh, they they have evidence or that uh, Pulwama attack was orchestrated by by Pakistan you know their first claim without having any basis within minutes of that event uh, or incident taking place then claiming that they had gone in and taken out a terrorist camp, then having killed 300 uh, soldiers, uh, sorry, terrorists, and then to have shot down one of our F-16s. So now in hindsight, you know, and these are not claims that we are making. These are all independently verified by media, international media. There was no terrorist camp, as they claimed. You know, there were no 300 terrorists. Uh, that uh, they uh, uh, claim to have killed. There was no F-16 shot. So one after the other, you know, most of the claims that they have made uh, throughout that episode have been uh, debunked by independent sources. So clearly, and this is something that we were saying from day one, uh, that, uh, you know, unfortunately, the government in India is using that particular incident uh, to draw political mileage at home because they were right in the middle of uh, elections and those elections are still continuing. Uh, so I, I really hope, while well, this is a very uh, bad trend, I would say, because, you know, when you try to externalize your own domestic political, uh, uh, you know, uh, domestic politics, uh, that uh, brings a factor of instability uh, into your relationship with that particular country on a long-term basis, which is not good. Yeah. Uh, because tomorrow, if any government is in trouble in India, they will probably use Pakistan as a punching bag to basically uh, bring up their uh, sagging uh, approval ratings. You know, So that's not good for the region. That's not good for India-Pakistan relationship. So we, we are keeping our fingers crossed. I think our prime minister has been absolutely clear and very consistent, even before he became prime minister. He extended that hand of friendship to India. We And it's not out of any sense of weakness, because you started off by asking me, what is the difference? The difference is that he feels that uh, unless and until we have a peaceful neighborhood, we will not be able to basically create that space that would allow us to realize our development potential. So for us to have more jobs, for us to have better economy, we need to have peace within and peace with our neighbors. And, and that's what is driving his policies. No disrespect, Ambassador, but has Pakistan any fault in any of this? Is all of this India's fault? At least uh, if you are talking about the Pulwama episode and the way I, I think it could not have absolutely happened at a worse time for Pakistan. This happened just a day before. Uh, you know, we had important visitors who were supposed to come and announce investments in Pakistan, you know. We were, uh, we have our hands full on our western border. Why is it, why on earth would Pakistan want to basically create uh, uh, and activate another border which we don't want to activate? So at least to that extent and the way this whole episode played out, I can say that we really have nothing to do with that. Back to Iran for a moment. Um, you, 
I Iran is, is, is really, <laughs> right now, not just because of the United States situation with Iran, and obviously Pakistan representing Iran's interest in the U.S., but as you mentioned, the whole region, and when you wrap all of this, Pakistan and India and Iran and Afghanistan all up into the same package, this Iran situation is really very dangerous. So what is your advice to the American government on handling um, the Iranian situation? Well, I, I, I would not uh, want to basically uh, uh, be, uh, you know, giving advice. I'm sure there are very well. Wise certainly, certainly, advice. they have their own advisors. Yes. But I'm saying you have a role to play here, representing Pakistan, and Pakistan is, as you have said, uh, a a world power in its own right, and you have the right to offer whether formal or informal, your thoughts on the situation, what would, what would those thoughts be if asked? No, I, I, I think we, we firmly believe that, uh, you know, uh, peace should be given a chance uh, and uh, uh, all uh, issues uh, and disputes uh, and conflicts, uh, wherever they are, uh, should be resolved uh, through dialogue and conversation. And uh, I think uh, military solutions uh, uh, should be actually the last, the last, the last resort. Uh, and uh, perhaps, you know, if there are issues and there are concerns that the United States has, uh, I, I think uh, uh, it should be resolved uh, through because we have a region which is already very volatile. Mm -hmm. And uh, there is uh, really no point uh, in uh, adding to that volatility, and it will only be counterproductive. One of the problems has been terrorism, and we haven't spoken much about that today. Um, you know, there's Al Qaeda, there's uh, ISIS, and I understand they've supposedly set up a new outpost in India someplace, which uh, doesn't preclude them from operating across the border. Um, there's also the Haqqani Network. What's the status of that organization? Uh, you know, I think we, we didn't cover or speak about terrorism for good reason, because I, we, as I told you uh, earlier also, I think we have uh, a lot to show for uh, in, in terms of what we have achieved against uh, terrorist groups of all kinds and hues, you know. Uh, the Pakistan-Afghan border, these tribal areas, you know, they have been cleansed. Uh, I can say this with responsibility to you that there is absolutely no organized presence of any group in Pakistan. Uh, I can also tell you that uh, we are determined, as is the Prime Minister and our leadership, to not let anyone use our territory against anyone or against any country. And uh, that includes the Haqqanis? That would include everybody. Anyone who is using terrorism as an instrument will be acted upon, has been acted upon, uh, act, acted against. Uh, and, uh, you know, these areas, these tribal areas, the, even the British could not, uh, uh, you know, uh, on, on the, uh, basically, these, the British, this was kind of created as a buffer. And these were areas where the writ of uh, the Pakistani state uh, would not uh, apply, as was the case before that with the British. So we have mainstreamed these areas into uh, Pakistan's uh, KPK province. So... FATA today is uh, the, the laws of uh, KPK, the, the law enforcement uh, jurisdiction of KPK uh, is applicable to. So this integration uh, has, is historic. And this will also allow for us and the, the provincial government uh, to basically uh, integrate uh, these areas better into mainstream Pakistan. And this is revolution, and not just that, you know. We have carried out almost 20,000 intelligence-based operations across Pakistan. Mm -hmm. So, and we, we really uh, have cleared and the improved security situation 
in Pakistan speaks for this. Mm -hmm. Last year, we had the lowest number of terrorist incidents uh, in 12 years, and, and we hope to actually see uh, this even improve uh, uh, in 2019. So all this speaks about uh, the indiscriminate nature of the operations that we have carried out. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, and uh, the successes that we have achieved against these groups. Very last thing on that, on, on that point. Um, so there is no uh, active terror group operating in Pakistan at this point? Absolutely not. And you're certain of that? I am certain of that. What is Pakistan's view on the future of relations? with the U.S.? Where do you want to go from where you, where you are now? Where would you like to go? What is your ultimate objective? No, I, as I said, that uh, there is, uh, this, has, this relationship has been a factor of stability for peace and security in the wider region. Uh, and we would uh, like to, to keep it that way. Uh, but on top of that, uh, we would also like... Uh, uh, to build uh, a relationship uh, where we are able to uh, create win-wins uh, uh, between our two countries uh, and uh, also to forge uh, partnerships uh, between uh, the people of the two countries, you know. I think the other important uh, commonality or convergence uh, that uh, we have is... Uh, both countries being democracies, you know. And in Pakistan, we, Prime Minister Imran Khan's government was the third in a row where, you know, one civilian government uh, passed on the baton to a, another civilian government. So this is really also marking the consolidation of democracy in Pakistan. So we would really want to work uh, with the United States uh, as a democratic uh, country in a neighborhood and in a region, wider region, where, uh, uh, you know, these uh, uh, values and principles are under stress. So that's another uh, point and another convergence that, uh, you know, would, uh, uh, that uh, gives us a good reason to work together. Uh, but coming back to that uh, question of uh, uh, terrorism that you just mentioned, no, really, I think, when I say this, uh, I, I say this uh, that there is no organized presence and we are determined to not let anyone use our territory. And this is part of the National Action Plan uh, that uh, uh, has the support of uh, the entire Pakistan, uh, irrespective of uh, uh, the political affiliation uh, that any uh, individual may have. All political parties have actually endorsed that national action plan. So it enjoys the support of the civilian leadership, of the military leadership, and everyone else. And that has actually really provided the basis for all these operations that we have carried out and all the successes that we have achieved. Thank you for sitting with me for a while today and talking, talking with me about the current situation. Thank you so much. Thank you. I enjoyed my conversation and look forward to doing it uh, sometime again. That's Pakistan's ambassador, Assad Majid Khan. Thank you, as always, for listening. I deeply appreciate the opportunity to spend some time today. Coming up on our next program, we'll deal with the latest breaking national security issues. If you have any questions about our program or comments or thoughts, send me an email at jgreen at wtop.com. That's the letter J, the color green, one word, at Whiskey Tango Oscar Papa. That's jgreen at WTOP.com. Also, check out our newsletter, Inside the Skiff, the latest national security stories you don't hear anywhere else, at WTOP.com slash alerts. And follow us on Twitter at TUSA Podcast. That's Tango Uniform Sierra Podcast. I'm J.J. Green, and this is Target USA. The National Security Podcast. Hey, everybody. Check out The Charlie Kirk Show on...